and welcome to the For Her Empire podcast. I'm your host, Abby Moucha. And in this podcast, we address the personal and the business issues that female entrepreneurs face in their day-to-day lives. Our guest today is Brenda Bailey. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Abby. Thank <laughs> you for having me. <laughs> nice to have you. Okay, so uh, Brenda is... Um, an income shatterer, shatterer of income. <laughs> an, an, an income ceiling shatterer, right? So we <laughs> an income get rid of those shatterer. limits. Yeah. Ooh, and a Tita um, healing instructor and master, right? Yes. That's, yes. You do a lot of things by doing. <laughs> you like so many things in one. <laughs> Yeah, it's what happens when we get a little older, Abby. I'm just going to tell you, time, get, time. That's one of the things that time allows us to do if we oh want God. to, right? I should look forward to that. At least, at least I know when I'm older, I have like several things I'm good at. Yeah. So, um, I know today we'll be talking about Tita healing and entrepreneurship. Uh, so if, yeah. can you tell us a bit more about you and what Tita healing is? Okay. So um, I'm here in the U.S., just so we know, because I know that this is going to be international. Um, I actually live in Texas, which a lot of people are familiar with that state. Uh, You know, not all the states are well known in the U.S., but Texas is. The Cowboy State. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Very Southern. And so um, I've been an entrepreneur for 29 years. It's kind of... um, (laughs) So I love working with entrepreneurs. So when I, when I saw Abby doing her podcast on this, I was like, I'm your gal. I want to do this. I love entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, I, I often say, you know, um, especially in this day and age, right, we've got a lot going on, um, you know, with the quarantine and with everything else. But this is the deal. It doesn't change what we're doing. And if you've been an entrepreneur long enough, the deal is, is that recessions happen. They come and go. They make or break you, right? You either step up or you step off. That's the deal. And I often find that um, being self-employed, right? Being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Some people like the security. They like the safety. They like the, you know, the routine. And as an entrepreneur, and if that's you, then don't do it, right? Like, I'm just going to There's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. Right. You have to be able to... The only way to grow our business, I always say that as an entrepreneur, we are our business. The only way to grow it is to step out of your comfort zone, right? And that's what Beta Healing does. It allows us to be able to get out of our way. Um, One of the things I've been, like I said, I've been an entrepreneur for almost 29 years, and I have 13 different certifications in integrative healing. Oh, Jesus I often find that as, 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 a, as an entrepreneur, I think for anybody, but I'm going to say, especially as an entrepreneur, it is important for us to look within ourselves because if we don't, that's where it goes wrong. Right. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I feel like that it's our limitations. It's our fears. Um, you're going to hit hiccups. What do you do with that? Right. Yeah. Like, so those road bumps, those hiccups, is it going to stop you or are you going to figure out how to pivot? You know, I was just um, in a group and somebody was, you know, saying the word pivot. They were giving a, a definition, right? Because that's what we're all having to do. Yeah. As I say, you know, as I, you know, it's like you do it. It's like you, you, you attempt something, right? Because we never use the word try, right? Because our, <laughs> our subconscious, God, the universe, whoever you believe to be your higher power doesn't recognize the word try. Because anybody that's in a relationship has children, they know what the word try means. It means it is not going to happen, you know? So we I'll you try always, to do you know, this. That's, right. It's like, I'm, you're either going to, it's kind of like Nike. You're either going to do it or not, right? It's that, yeah. like that, uh, you know, you're either going to do it or not, right? It's, that's just how it is. And so, you know, what ends up happening, you know, because I've been, my first business that I had, so pretty much my career is broken up into 14 years each, right? I had a seven figure sales company. Um, I did trade show sales, which means I traveled all around, actually just in the U.S. and sold products. Okay. And, um, but there was something called the internet that was coming out. <laughs> yes. 
And, uh, you know, because that tells you, like, it hasn't been around forever, right? And, <laughs> and I knew that that was going to change how people bought things. I knew because people would come to trade shows, especially the shows that I did, yeah. to find out about products, to find out oh. about the latest, greatest, right? But now we've got Google, right? Yeah. We've got it at our fingertips. Yeah. All you have to do is a search. If you're looking for, or, you know, you just put in a few words and you can find any information yeah. that you want. You don't have to go to the library. You don't have to go. I mean, there, there are a lot of pros. And so people who did trade shows, if they didn't pivot, right? They're not making the money that they could have. Yes. But I knew then that it was like a self-defining moment. You know, I'd done well. Was this something that, you know, what, did, what else did I want to do with my life? And, and the beautiful thing was, is that making that kind of money, having the kind of time off that I could have, right? Because it was very seasonal. Oh, but that I was able to take a lot of classes, right? You take a class, you get a certification. So yeah. I was able to do retreats, workshops, you know, and I, and I say, you know, here's the, here's, you know, cause I'm going to throw in some things, right? Here's another, piece right. Of advice, right. You cannot expect people to spend more with you than you're willing to do on yourself. Okay. So you have to invest in yourself as an entrepreneur, yes. whether that's getting a coach, whether that's learning something right now, right now, because of the situation in the world, there's a lot of free stuff. Right. So yeah. You, know, you, <laughs> yeah there so, is. you know, you know, again, you're going to get what you pay for. So you'll get some information, but if you really want to do that investment, so whether it's getting another certification, whether it's getting, you know, um, another skill, right. That just enhances what you do. Um, if you had told me, you know, like 15 years ago that I would be a fade healer, I would have been like, are you crazy? Like oh, that, how? you know, I would, I just <laughs> never thought that I would be using one of the, my integrative healing modalities and what I do for a living. But what ended up happening is I took the class, the heavens parted and the angels sang. I mean, like it <laughs> literally changed my life. I'd already been like taking all these classes and everything. And like in this short period of time. I saw a lot of changes. I didn't have to feel a lot of pain over it. And what I noticed, and you know, it's kind of like you kind of go note to self through all of this course of action of like, you know, 14 years of having my sales company and taking like retreats and classes. Every time I made a lot of change, which at that point was really painful and very enduring and very deep, my, my income doubled. Whoa! So I was starting to see a correlation, right? I was starting to see a correlation between yeah. me working on myself as an entrepreneur and what my business could do, right? Yeah. And I even, had, you know, I had a crew that worked with me, and they would, you know, and I was very, I've always been very new agey, very alternative, very integrative healing, <laughs> and I would have this like, very like mainstream type crew, uh, but they would be like. Or are you going to put that prosperity crystal in my booth in the left hand corner? Are you going to, you know, because I would do little things yeah, for I them the and they would on it and then they would be like, uh, don't forget that. Um, yeah. you know, take that with you. Because take that with you. we're looking like, to call it in and it's intention, right? But the thing is, is that our beliefs, our traumas and our non-forgiveness block what it is that we're wanting to accomplish. You know, it, it, it prevents it from happening. So you can get all the schooling that you want and all the training, right? Yeah. But what I find with people is that they usually will either hire a business coach or they'll mm -hmm. be in like some type of group and they'll learn what the, the steps of what they need to do, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll do it. And they don't make money. Oh. Or they'll get all the information that they need to know in order to be able to do it. And yeah. then they don't apply it. <laughs> right? People do one of two things, you know, and it's like the same thing. And it's like, what's the common denominator in this situation? You. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, we can't point the finger to anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's the hardest thing for an entrepreneur, right? Is that we're having to say, like, it's my fault. Yes. It's my mistake. Yes. Right. It's it. I'm the reason that this didn't happen. Cause if you're not, you're not going to grow. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if you're looking to blame everybody else, like, Oh, that person, 
you know, didn't deliver the work that they said, well, what was your piece in that? Right? Like, <laughs> did you hire the wrong person? Did you not listen to your intuition? I always kiddingly say my intuition told me to buy toilet paper back in February, buy extra toilet paper. And I thought, why do I want to, you know, I live like where it gets really hot. Right. Oh. And sometimes when you have like a lot of paper products, it's just inviting bugs, right? Like it's just oh. inviting bugs. So it's like, I don't want to carry a lot of extra at home. No, I don't mind don't just to. The store and, you know, buy, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like a 12 pack or whatever. <laughs> but it was like, you know, my intuition told me to buy it. Go and buy then extra. a month later, <laughs> when I'm standing at seven o'clock in the morning at the grocery store to try to get toilet paper, right? Because that was one of the things. It yeah. was selling out yes, when the quarantine yes. started, right? And so it's like, you know, when we refine our intuition, it can help us in small things like toilet paper. They right? <laughs> are really big things. Oh like, okay. On who to choose, like to work with. You know, you're going to make mistakes. Like you may learn something or you may work with something. It's like it's never a waste of time or money because as long as you're willing to look like, yeah. what did I get out of this? Yeah, yeah, yes. Even what from every I bad experience, there's always something to learn from it. Absolutely. Now, once we work on ourselves, the bad experiences lessen. Like, we can, we can stop learning from what doesn't work, right? We can start learning from what does. And that's the big thing is that a lot of people have a lot of beliefs that make things harder than what it is, right? Yeah. And that's really not good when you are self-employed, when you're an entrepreneur. We want to be able to learn from what works. We don't want to have to go through pain in order to grow. Yes. We want to be able to ride on our successes. So, you know, a lot of modalities that are out there work with the brain, right? Like yes. change the mind, right? Yeah. But the deal is, is that we only use 11% of our brain and it limits what we can do. And so people always think like, oh, you know, like it's a good thing to be in our head. Not always because the most successful, even if you like read a lot of books, right? Yeah. The most successful business people are yeah. ones that follow their intuition. Okay. Right? That, uh, that meditate, that have practices oh. that build upon themselves, you know? I mean, you, again, you just have to read, right? And, or listen to audiobooks, whatever works for you, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, and they'll say, like, the most successful people read. Why? Because we, then we, we expose ourselves to other people's experiences. We expose ourselves to the lessons, you know, to the, you know, the, the words of wisdom that people have for us. Mm. And, and that can also help as well, because we have to stay in a good, a positive frame of mind, which is not always easy if you have non-forgiveness, right? Like people don't understand, like these things sound like something that we need, like for our lives. Yes. But if you're self-employed, if you're an entrepreneur, guess what? You need them even more because you're not just showing up to a nine to five job and get to leave it when you're done. No, no, you stay in there. <laughs> right. Wherever you go, you're always going to be there. And guess what? It's always at your work. Yes. So it's, you know, getting out of our own way and mm -hmm. investing in ourselves, you know, changing some things. Again, if your budget is that you've got to do it for free, then do it for free. But I'm going to tell you the one thing that I always learned as well after 29 years is not only when I looked within myself, but when I invested. So whether it was like, you know, working with a business coach um, or working with a mindset coach, I mean, you know, whatever that was, it, I always benefited from it. It always correlated and showed up in my business. And again, if we're doing our business from that very core, strong position, it always correlates to more money. Oh. I mean, so it's, like the next day, right? It's in the long run. Yeah. It's, it's the foundation of uh, Tether Healing, of uh, investing in yourself and reading a lot. That's like the foundation of Tether Healing. 
what, found, what baby healing does is it makes changes at a cellular level. Okay. So it bypasses the subconscious and conscious mind. Traumas, we hold those cellularly, right? We've either had them in this life. Again, if our, if our ancestors have gone through trauma, we bring that in. So culturally, we see things, right? Yes. Um, if you believe in past lives, whether or not you do, right? But we, it, it, even a mass consciousness, right? We bring those beliefs into us cellularly. So what Theta Healing does is it changes non-forgiveness, trauma, beliefs that are held at a cellular level. Because a lot of information that's out there will say, change how you think. Yeah. And it will change how you believe. That's a lot of effort. As the best way you're trying to think. So if you change it on a cellular level, your thoughts and your emotions will just follow. You get to be very objective because what happens a lot of times, especially if we're finding like that our business feels difficult, one, it's either that we're just not being okay with the discomfort of growing, right? Oh. But also part of it is too, is that we're pushing up and we're not listening to ourselves, right? So when we clear these beliefs, when we clear these traumas, when we clear the non-forgiveness, it allows us to be in our knowing. And again, that makes for the most successful entrepreneurs. You make it sound very simple. <laughs> well, Theta Healing is very simple. That's the deal, right? With most people, we make things harder than what it needs. To be. <laughs> and that's usually what we do. Like, that's a belief. I have to make things, you know, uh, no pain, no gain, right? Um, if it's, if it's, if it's sounds too good to be true, it is. You know, really it's too good to be true. Right? <laughs> right? If it's, if it's, you know, like we just have all of these and it's because we've somewhere along the line, not listened to our intuition and we've, you know, reemphasized, right. Reinforced that, oh no, you know, it can't be that easy. Right. And that's been like the thing, like I've had many a client, like, you know, successful, like real estate investors, that type of thing, yeah. commercial investors that look at me, especially males. Right. They'll be like, cause men are very analytical. Right. Cause we know this. I'm not, you know, again, men and women's brains are, well, are just different. different. Genetically yeah. they're different. Right. So men are very one track minded. They look at things, they analyze things, they see it, you know, and I've had, Many a man tell me, I'm, I don't know what you do, Brenda. I don't get it, but it works, right? So you don't even have to understand it because the thing is, they'll say, you know, uh, deals are going through, you know, financing is being approved and it wasn't before, right? Yeah. Well, again, that has to do with that. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong. COVID has slowed some things down, right? Like <laughs> It's slowed like everything down. down. It's really funny. I just paid off my car last month and I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to get the title for it for months, right? Uh, it arrived like in two weeks. I was shocked. It's the quickest that I've ever gotten, you know, a title that I've paid off something. Oh. But I was just, you know, automatically assuming like it was going to take, take a long a while, time yeah. because everything's taking longer now. Everything no, takes longer. not necessarily, right? But, you know, again, Luckily, I wasn't putting that out there. It could happen quicker, right? Yeah. So it was like, it was, it was fine. Now, again, yes, um, if people are looking like to get their, you know, like the, um, here in the States, we have like these um, small business loans that the government's doing, that yeah. type of thing. Yes. Well, they're getting inundated, right? So they had no idea. So it's taking a little longer, um, but it's happening, you know? Um, so that it. kind of thing, yes, you know, oh, it's nice, you know, so, I mean, it, it's that type of thing. Um, what other questions do you have for me? Abby? Yeah. Now, now, now that you said that it's, it's easy, it's easy. Now I'm wondering if you're going through trauma, um, how is this changing on a cellular level going to like make my trauma disappear? Like, wouldn't I need like a therapist or something or counseling? Well, a lot of times. Trauma is relative, right? So 
what may be like traumatic for Abby may not be traumatic for me and vice versa. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, is that for most people, we kind of put it away. We compartmentalize it. Like, so I, my family has a medical background, so I've worked with a lot of doctors like MDs, psychotherapists, yeah. psychiatrists, psychologists, because this is quicker, right? Like than traditional psychotherapy. Yes. Because for a lot of times, what ends up happening for most people is that they just know that they're doing, you know, we get in that definition of insanity. We see a repeating pattern, right? We know that we're doing something wrong, yes. but we don't know and why. Is, yeah. Like, why is this happening? And most of the time, it's a trauma of some sort. You know, we suffer so many traumas. We inherit the suffering of traumas, right? We bring in the trauma, like I said, of the mass consciousness, and then we hold it in. And again, when you're like thinking about some of these things, it's like, how would I know what that is? Right? How would I know what that is? Yeah. And then do I have to open it up and feel it again? No. And experience it? Doesn't that sound horrible? Like, so it sounds painful healing, also. Right. And like, and again, I'm not saying that I, I want you to be like a zombie or a robot and not feel any of your emotions. I mean, that's part of what makes us human. But what ends up happening is that because of the traumas that we store on a cellular level, it, it amplifies it, right? So maybe something happens mm -hmm. and like, we need to be upset about it, right? Like we need to be hurt by it or whatever, yeah. but it feels like this endless amount of pain. Right. Yeah. And as human beings, just what we do is because of the traumas that we store at a cellular level, we either project that onto things that don't even have anything to do with it and we refeel it all over again. Or we attract the similar situations, right? And it makes us refeel it. So what Theta Healing does is it allows us to keep like the gifts, right? There's a gift we get, like we were saying, there's a lesson or a gift that we get from everything. Yes. Right? So what we've gotten, you know, what we've learned from that, what, how we've benefited from it, right? And we say, according to Theta Healing, that like with the trauma, like that we have like free floating memories. Mm -hmm. And we just pack up those memories. And like I said, we either attract the same type of thing or we project it. So what we do is we get rid of those free floating memories and it allows objectivity. It allows neutrality. So when you look at like Eastern influences and religions, they're always talking about being in neutrality, right? Being in objectivity. Oh. But for most of us, we're constantly reacting. And we don't, a lot of people, like I even had a client here recently had a session with me because I do like an intro session oh, with people, okay. you know, so then for them to have the experience to see what I can do. Right. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. And she's like saying like that she's numb. Right. And I'm like, no, no, that's neutrality. Like I'm really like, I just, you know, cause people are so used to being reactive. Right. Mm -hmm. Or being really high or really oh, low. And then goodness. when you can just be even keel, right? When things can happen and you can be like in your knowing, right? Nothing's blocking it. And you can make, it's a very powerful position to be in. And then also the traumas and the non-forgiveness, right? Because non-forgiveness is huge. Like forgiving yourself, forgiving the around you. Like people are wondering. Hmm? For, for the non-forgiveness, is it about I'm not forgiving again, yourself please? or not forgiving others? Both. Oh. Both. Because most of the time as human beings, the, we forgive everybody else, but we don't forgive ourselves. And again, that just sets us up, right? To yeah. keep doing that definition of sanity, keep making those same mistakes because we're oh. just not forgiving ourselves. People usually don't forgive like whoever they believe to be their higher power, which for me is God, right? So 
again, whoever, I have no judgment on who you believe to be your higher power, right? <laughs> but whoever well, you believe to be your higher power, normally, and, and we blame ourselves, even if it wasn't our fault. Because as kids, we do that a lot. If something happens, especially as children, it's like, it's our fault. My dad left my mom. Didn't that was like my fault. fault. Yeah, that was my fault, right? My grandma died. That was my fault. Like, I mean, as a kid, like, how can that be your fault, right? But somehow we internalize it and we make it our fault, yeah. right? Yeah. So all of those types of things, people just don't realize it, right? And the deal is, is that even if people have success, like with my last company, I didn't have this information, you know, but I'm like doing all this really deep, painful work so that I can be happier, right? Because I seem to have had it all, but I still wasn't happy. Right. Yeah. I mean, I truly was living that saying money can't buy you happiness. Right. Yeah, at least you had the money. And I, <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. But I will tell you, happiness is where it's at. Well, you right? seem very, very and happy. The money will follow. <laughs> right. So if you can have, right. If you can have money, you may not have happiness. But if you can have happiness, you can also have money. And so it's, it's like, you know, it's like, here's the secret to do the work. And there, and I always say there are many roads. If you want to take the long, arduous, hard one, God bless you. And you know, that's your choice. But if you want it to be quicker, if you want it to be easier, you know, really, and again, you may find another modality or you may find another road that feels like it's just as quick and easy. And I support you in that. Like, I guess if I have to say anything, it's just, I want to say, that it's possible for it to be quick and easy, right? Mm -hmm. I want to say, you know, if you don't want to do theta healing, that's fine. If you don't want to find out about theta healing, that's fine. You know, that's good. If you are like, well, that sounds interesting, but Brenda, I don't think that you're my theta healer. Okay. Well, I'm glad I could give you the information and find one that does work for you, right? <laughs> I always say I'm not meant to be the theta healer for everybody. I'm not meant to be yes, the instructor yes. for everybody. Yeah. But I have. 13 different certifications, in integrative healing. I've really worked on myself, right? And, and I, I support people in that. And, and I always say the clearer the healer, the clearer the healing. So I really, you know, I, integrity is very important to me, walking my talk. So I really support that with people. Okay. But I also have the experience of having been self-employed. And I know what that's like, right? Oh. I know what it's like to go through a recession. I know what it's like to be scared to upscale and take the next step. I know what needs to shift in order for that to happen, right? Yeah. And um, I've been doing this a long time. So I'm really yes. good at what I do, right? But, you know, and I, one of my favorite sayings is money is not the most important thing, but it touches everything that <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> So we want to make money. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that's the thing too. I think, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make as entrepreneurs is they don't actually treat it like their profession, their job. They treat it like a hobby, right? Yes. Well, guess what? Hobbies don't make money, right? <laughs> so we have to be like in it to, to want to, you know, make money. Is this good, Abby? Is this, is this what you're wanting to, I mean, tell me what, you know, because I mean, as far as like an entrepreneur, like if somebody hasn't said this to you, I'm glad that I can be, right? <laughs> because yeah, there are a lot of things that I wished I would have known in the beginning. Yeah, but no, no, I'm wondering. I've like, had many people say to me, like being an entrepreneur is the way to do it. But you got to be able to like, I mean, not everybody's meant to be it. Yeah. And you've got to be able to, to look at yourself and to assess things yeah. in a objective way. And that's what Theta Healing allows us to do, right? When it allows us to get out of our way, it allows our past not to haunt us. And, you know, when you can be in that objective, neutral, non-reactive. Okay. No, I guess my be, question is you know, this. So now I'm in an objective, non-reactive state, um, but how does Theta Healing actually relates to entrepreneurship how does that could like like you say your income shatter your income ceiling shatters that so how do you connect um theta healing to actually having um a lot of financial abundance so to speak like how are we connecting those two 
Right. People always want to make like abundance, right? Like being prosperous yeah. about their self-worth. Oh, I was abused as a child, or I was raised poor, or I was this, or I was that. And so, you know, <laughs> and we're in this victim of our circumstances, right? But if we can stop being a victim, which again, with data healing can happen like this, Stop being a survivor, right? So everybody always boasts, I've survived this. It's like, guess what? And you're always in a state of survival, right? So we want to be able to be a champion and, and overcome things, you know, like, again, like what we say and how we think is what our world. And so when we can change things at a cellular level, then what we think, what we say, how we feel is different. And it just allows us to be more successful. It allows us to get out of our way. And that's what Theta Healing does because that's what it takes. Okay. We've got to get out of our way in order to be able to be successful. People always say, oh, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest fears is failure. No, one of the biggest fears is success. <laughs> okay, you know? success comes to me. <laughs> right. And people, most people are like, oh no, you know, people are very comfortable. We have a saying in Texas, I'll share it with you. Uh -huh. Shit stinks, but it's warm. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's, we it may be bad, but we know it, and so we're comfortable with it, right? Yeah. So we have to step out of our comfort zone. We have, and so success may be something that's new for you. Being objective may some be something that's new from you. Not being a victim may be something that's new for you. So you can do it and, and roughhouse it and push through it. Or you can have somebody just help you change those on a cellular level and it will just come with ease. Because everybody has a zone of genius. Everybody is a gift. If you don't believe it, then guess what? People don't get to enjoy your gift. Like, I have to tell you, I'm an introvert. Believe it or not, people find really? it hard to believe. I don't <laughs> like to be in big crowds, right? Oh. I don't like to be on video. You are I don't like right to have my, I don't like to have my picture taken, right? Yeah. If I did everything that I didn't like to do, I wouldn't be sitting here with Abby right now. Yeah. You know, this is not my norm this is not what i you know like if, if you're like you know like some people thrive and they love it and it really the extroverts love this kind of stuff yeah. introverts don't but this is where we're at in this day and age yes right and if so again i have to step out of my comfort zone in order to be able to get my message to people to let people know what i can do for them to be able to, you know, I mean, it's just how it is. Yes, and so, yes, yes. you know, I, I, maybe I make it look easy, you know, but you do make it look but easy. It's, <laughs> right. But that's not, it's, it, it's, it, it wasn't to begin with. Oh. Right. It scared the crap out of me. Right. I had fear around it. You know, there's that saying, you know, everything good is on the other side of fear. Data healing just makes it easier to get on the other side of fear, yeah. okay. right? And that's what, again, that's another thing that holds us back. So that's the thing that I want to say, you know, it's like, I mean, I, one-on-one, -on -one, yes, yeah. I can, I do fine with people. It's not like I'm saying I'm some type of social incompetent or something like that. I think that's like the biggest mistake that people make is that, oh, she's an, or, or they're an introvert, so they're not good socially. Yeah, well, they're yeah. good socially one-on-one, -on -one, right? They're not yeah. good socially in a group, Yeah, you know? When we could speak in front of people, right? I've spoke at many conferences and that kind of thing. Was that easy for me? No. no. Did I do it? Yeah. Because then how, you know, so that's the deal. It's like, am I willing to do what it takes in order to grow my business? And mm -hmm. Theta Healing allows me to get out of my way so that I can do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, now I, you've, you've given us like so many benefits of Theta Healing. But like, are there any specific um, like action points or activities that somebody could use to get started with, uh, with Theta Healing? Because, like, it's just giving us all the benefits. Like, what do I need to do? Right. Like, yeah. So, 
do you want to have an experience in it? Okay, let's try this. Okay. Yeah. So whenever I work with a new client or a new student, right? So I'm just going to kind of give you some basics here. Okay. I always make sure that they have three beliefs in place. Uh -huh. I want an instant healing. I deserve an instant healing. And an instant healing is possible, right? Okay. It works quickly. So we have to be able, now, is this an instant healing? Is this the only time that we, you know, have instant healings is through Theta Healing? No. Go to the chiropractor, have an acupuncture, yeah. right? The body is intended to heal itself quickly, right? It's different things that we do that prevent that from happening. Yeah. So I'm not just saying like, we're going to change these beliefs and it's only going to work and say the healing, like, you know, like as far as it's going to affect every area of your life, mm -hmm. you know, because I always say, if I work with somebody personally, I help them professionally. If I work with somebody professionally, I help them personally because it all becomes one and the same, right? Because yes. it's that saying, no matter where I go, I'm always there, right? So it's wherever we are. So those three beliefs. Now, the deal is with Theta Healing is that it's a very, the right word um respectful modality okay so i can't just like say i'm gonna be working on abby all the time and her not be aware of it uh. that's not how it works one abby's <laughs> brain needs to know that i'm working on her right okay so one i'll look right so go, i'm talking to abby right now but pr i promise you if you're watching the replay all you have to do is do what i'm telling you right if you <laughs> want to right so once again, if you don't want this, don't do it, right? I, I mean, that's your choice. I support you in whatever. Um, I encourage you to say yes, but <laughs> I support you. So I'm going to ask Abby, like, mm -hmm. can we change those? And she's going to say yes or no. And then what's important is that she say yes out loud, right? Because okay. it tells our brain, yes, I want this. Okay. It tells the universe, yes, I want this. It tells whoever you believe to be your higher power. Yes, I want this. And then okay. everybody conspires to give you what you want. Yeah. So it's like a prayer or a meditation, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and do this, right? Okay. So Let's do this. I want an instant healing. I deserve an instant healing. And instant healing is possible. Would you like those? Yes. Yes? Yes. Right. Have to say yes out loud, right? You don't have to scream it, but you yes. got to say it out loud. I was actually working... <laughs> I, I was actually working with somebody and they were going, they were going, yes, you know, right? Because they didn't want to say it so loud. And I was like, just so you know, they are saying it. Yes. Right. So, okay, so come on, go ahead and change those. Okay. Now, the beautiful thing about Theta Healing is that in a session, right, or in a class, we use kinesiology. So it's very cool. We do muscle testing. So we test what the beliefs are because people only know how they think and how they feel. They don't know what their beliefs are. They think yeah. they know what their beliefs are, but they don't know what their beliefs are. So we test them. So Theta Healing is like a science experience. And we're not doing that here because we're just, you know, doing a demonstration. Yeah. But what we do is we typically muscle test the before and we muscle test the after so that again, we confirm that the change has happened. Okay. The brain needs that, right? So Abby, if you had to guess like your viewers or yourself, right? Uh -huh. Because typically I'm going to tell you Abby's viewers are her, right? Like yeah. that's just how it works. What she struggles with is more than likely because we, we're all drawn together for our common beliefs, right? If you had to say, what do you feel like would be like the two biggest challenges that your viewers would have? Um, I think one would be, would be um, accountability. More like you say, I'm, I'm going to do this stuff. And then you just like, you don't do it. You're just like procrastinating because things keep coming up. And so it just keeps being pushed, keep being pushed, keep being pushed. I think that'll be one of them. Okay. Um, I think that the second one is, is you being, um, confident in your business idea like you have a business idea but you're not confident enough in, in it to share it with somebody or to actually put it to practice and then make a living out of it so it just remains in your right. head yeah right 
And that's where trauma comes into place, right? Yeah. Because if people have been traumatized and everybody's been traumatized, guys, so please don't be like thinking it's got to be somebody who's like been involved in a war or had a car accident <laughs> or okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's relative. So, I mean, it's, 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 it, it, you know, and whether you're like, oh, that was no big deal. I sometimes have like clients and they'll be like, oh, well, I didn't think that that was a trauma. And I'd be like, oh my God, that was a trauma, you know, like, and I, and you don't have to be aware of what all of them are. But accountability and procrastination are two different things, mm -hmm. okay? Accountability means that we're not willing to take responsibility for ourselves, which usually if somebody is a victim, they're not willing to do that. Now, the reason that most people procrastinate is lack of intention and clarity, right? Because mm -hmm. if we're clear, if we're intentional, we'll move heaven and earth. But we typically procrastinate because we're, we don't have that clarity. Like, we, you know, again, we have to be able to put like our stake in the ground and say, I'm going to do this. Yes. But if you're not truly clear on what you want the outcome to be, you know, we're going to procrastinate. Now, and maybe it's a trauma that prevents us from doing that. Maybe it's, you know. So, and then when we're, you know, so this is the cool thing is that I don't have to know why you did it. We can just clear it. Okay. And then you can thank Abby for bringing it up right? <laughs> on her podcast, right? So what we're going to do is that's the beautiful thing about working with people's trauma. So one, we have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves and whoever we believe to be our higher power. We have to forgive um, who caused, you know, like who was involved in it, right? So like say maybe you're working at home mm -hmm. and your kids are at home right now. Yes. I promise you, you got to forgive your kids, right? Because <laughs> they're needing things. And again, it doesn't make you a bad parent, right? Because you're like, oh, I got to forgive my kids. Uh, it's just geez. like, I'm trying to do this. And you guys are, you know, wanting me to turn on the TV or something or wanting me to, you know, feed you or whatever, right? Inevitably, right as I'm getting started something, my dog needs to go outside, right? So I have to stop what I'm doing. Yes. You know, I, always, I always look at her sometimes and go, oh, it, it, our timing is off here, you know? Like, I'll be like, I'll be in the middle of something, right? Yes. And, but the thing is, is that um, if I can just forgive her, and forgive myself, right? Because, man, I sound like a horrible person for being upset that my dog's got to go outside, right? Yeah. Like, really? No, but I'm being human, right? So we have to forgive ourselves for being human. It, it just is. Like, it, there's no judgment on it. It's like that yeah. you need to forgive your spouse or your significant other or your parents or your siblings. You know, I mean, it just is. I mean, human beings do things on a daily basis that we need to forgive. A post on Facebook. Sometimes we need to forgive somebody for that. You know, I mean, there are just a million things. <laughs> forgive me, but we're, we're on Facebook. At, right now, there's a lot of that going on. Um, but just in, in what we're talking about, like as far as, you know, um, accountability, right? So we have to forgive ourselves when we haven't been accountable, right? We have to forgive ourselves and God and whoever else, right? Like whoever else are the players in this, right? It yes. may not just be about us, right? Um, we have to forgive ourselves for being a victim. We have to forgive ourselves for um, not willing to take responsibility. We have to forgive ourselves for not being clear on the outcome, right? Um, we need to forgive ourselves for um, not willing to step out of our comfort zone. Right, okay. um, because it's a big deal to tell people like what it is that we want to do yes. or what we think is a good idea, and inevitably, this non forgiveness and these traumas make us pick the wrong people to share it with. Right, everybody always wants their family to be on board with what they're doing for a living, yeah, they're not always, always going to be your biggest supporter. Some of them will, some of them won't. Seriously, I will just say. I've been self-employed for almost 29 years, and my family sees it as being unemployed. Really? Seven-figure sales company. Yes. 
but that doesn't stop me. That doesn't, I don't have to like be like, oh no, you have to know that I'm a success. They don't have to know that. They just have to love me, right? Yeah. That's it. But, so if I'm putting like all of this on them, yeah. then again, that's going to stop me, right? We have to be able to do it despite what everybody else is saying, right? We have to be able to, we have to believe in ourselves. So we have to forgive ourselves for not believing in ourselves, oh, right? Okay. So, you know, so if, and so we're covering like everything that Abby's talked about. So, so let's just do this, right? Um, can I, can I muscle test for you, Abby? Sure. Can I do How like does that a work? surrogate and muscle test? Okay. So all you have to do is just say yes and I'll do okay. it for you. Right. Okay. So right, right now I say yes. I say no. Right. I say yes. I say no. And okay. I say, my name is Brenda. That's a yes. I say, my name is Abby. That's a no. Yes. So then I'm going to go up and shift it to where I'm a surrogate for Abby. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So say yes. Say no. My name is Brenda. My name is Abby. Right. So I'm surrogating for Abby. Right. Okay. So I forgive myself. So do you believe in God, Abby, or who do you yeah. believe in? Do you yeah, believe I believe in God. God or creator or what do, you, what do you call your higher power? Okay. So I forgive myself for the non-forgiveness, right? Like for the non-forgiveness list, right? That Brenda, yes. I forgive myself for the list that Brenda just had. No. Right. I forgive God for the forgiveness list that Brenda just stated. No. I forgive the people who were involved in this for the forgiveness list. No, right? So we want to change that. And so just understand, I'm just using Abby as an example, oh. but if you're watching this, you can just say yes, right? Oh, and it'll be okay. for you. But we're just gonna, I'm just giving you an example for like Abby, right? <laughs> this is what I'm talking to right now, okay. right? So can we change that, Abby? Yes. Can we have forgiveness? Yes. For what we've just listed? Yes. So she's saying yes, right? And we also want to know how forgiveness serves us, right? Because for most people, they believe, like, if I forgive, I'll forget, right? And what people don't understand, forgiveness is not for that other person or event. It's for us. Because I promise you, that person has gone on with their life. <laughs> they haven't thought twice about it, right? Yeah, but right? nobody wants to like, know that. They're like suffering over it, right? Yeah. And you're holding on to it. And again, it's blocking your abundance, your prosperity, your success. That's why you want to say yes, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and. All right, so say yes, say no. So say, um, I forgive myself for the forgiveness list. Yeah, yes. I forgive myself for, uh, I forgive God for the forgiveness list. Yes. yes. And I forgive others who were involved in this for the forgiveness list. Yes. yes. Now, yes, I'm being a surrogate for you. You could say, oh, you're doing that on purpose. But honestly, I, I'm objective in this. Because if it hasn't changed, then I want to figure out why, right? Like, I want to help her with that. It doesn't serve me as a theta healer to just let it be yes for her if it's not yes, right? Yeah. Because I want her to be able to have a shift and doing this. Um, let's see. Um, I'm just thinking about, okay. So um, it's safe for people to know the gift that I am. No, right? So we want to make it, because usually people don't do things because it's not safe for them right? So then they tell somebody who's going to say, oh, that's a horrible idea, or, or oh. people are not going to create it, right? Oh, we, yeah. So we had to make it safe. You could be able to tell the people who are going to say yes, like, I love that. Yes, I want that, you know? Um, let's see. Thinking. Um, oh, say so yes, say no. I am a victim. No, good. I'm a survivor. No, good, right? Because sometimes non-forgiveness will just change some things, right? And that's what's cool, right? Yeah. So we don't have to be a victim. We don't have to be, you know? So let's do this one. It's safe to be intentional. No, right? So we want to be, you got to be intentional, right? It, 
even if you're not an entrepreneur, this is in life as well, in our lives. You know, we want to be intentional. We want it to be safe, to, to share, you know, our zone of genius, to share our gift. So it may have nothing to do with work. It may, you may not, you know, how about this one, right? It's a sin to serve others and make money. No, good. <laughs> how about, how about um, I know the difference between service and servitude. No. So we want to change that one because this is the thing. And I'm so going, okay, so it's not a sin to be in service and make money. But if you don't know the difference between being in service and being in servitude, that's a big deal because being in service is, you know, what it sounds like, but being in servitude, it's like an indentured slave type thing, right? Oh, and so we okay. don't want to be like doing it for free. We don't want to be doing oh. it, getting more than what, than, you know, what, what they're paying for, so to speak. We want to know that, you know, our value, that allows us to be like in our value. So can we change those? Yes. Let's do that. Yes. Knowing the difference between service and servitude. servitude. Yes. Right? Okay. All right. So say yes, say no. It's safe to uh, share my gift. Yes. Okay. Um, I know the difference between service being in service and being in servitude. Yes. So those, those are important, right? So that just kind of gives you a little taste right? <laughs> of, of what baby healing can do. And I'll change oh the surrogacy once we get done, right? Like being her yeah. surrogate for muscle testing. I'll change that once we get off. You don't, don't have to see that. Like just, you know, yeah. just know that yeah, I do so, it. Um, um, take the healing and then um, holistic healing. It, uh, does it mean you have to like live a very... Um, minimalist stripped down life with like very little material wealth right this is that's the biggest thing that is a, she brings up a really great belief right and that's a belief like usually that we inherit that um here's this one because really honestly even if you don't believe in god it's usually about our relationship with god just saying and if you can look in history right it's that we had to give up all our earthly belongings in yeah. order to have to be have 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 a relationship <laughs> with God, right? Yeah. That is not what God wants us to do, but it's what you know people think they're supposed to. Yes. So um I have to struggle to be closer to God. No. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be poor to be closer to God. Oh no. Yes. Right? So those are like those are two big ones that people typically have. Right? So, and so good thing that Abby brought those up. So can we change those? Yes. Yes? Yes. And keep in mind when you're watching this replay, as long as you say yes out loud, you can have this work. It's okay. kind of cool, right? <laughs> so say yes, say no. Um, I have to struggle to be closer to God. No. no, I have to be poor to be closer to God. No. no. So there you go. Those are changed. <laughs> Who knows what Abby's going to do now, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, right? Look I out, world, right? Yeah. You know, so a couple of things just to let you know. Um, I have um, a free one minute meditation. Okay. Now it's intentional. Like I do it for abundance. But if a relationship or love or if you want something else, just make, again, make that your intention. And you literally, it's one minute, right? Okay. And it's free. Where can we and, get that? Um, and it's, you go to Shatter Your Income Ceiling. So www.shatteryourincomeceiling.com, okay. right? And, you know, put your name and email in there and you'll get it. And what I tell people to do is listen to it for it's one minute, right? Okay. Listen to it first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening. Do it for 30 days. See what happens. Ooh, I gave it People again. contact me all the time. <laughs> like I just had a gal that just told me that um, her husband won like some scratch off tickets. <laughs> like he won like, 
$1,500, right? So it doesn't have to be like, through this hard work. It's like, right? Abundance comes in so many different ways, but you know, most of us are all like, no, it has to come in this one way. Yes. Hey, listen, if I don't have to do it at the expense of myself, let it come however it wants to come, right? Yeah. And, uh, and she was saying like, you know, she started listening to it and the next week she got like, she had like 16 clients. Right. And, the, and, right. and this has been like somebody who's right, been right like, she's a, reflex, she's a reflexologist. What, right? what does that mean? So shatteryourincomeceiling.com. Um, what? Oh, found Shatteryourincomeceiling.com. Oh. So Abby will share that, right? Like in the, you know, like when she posts this, she'll share that, right? So that you can be able to get it. And if you want to have a conversation with me, right? Yeah. It's um, www.chatwithbrendab.com. Oh. And you can schedule B. like a, like, mm-hmm. You can have a conversation with me. If you have any questions about Theta Healing, I teach this technique. And for the first time in 20 years, they're allowing us to teach it virtually. We've oh. never been allowed to do that. So if you want to be able to learn this technique for yourself, if you feel like it can help you in like what you do for a living, I think that every parent, every coach, you know, ought to know this technique. I have a lot of people that have put me like a session with me, like in their package so that their client can have more success and they just are easier to work with, right? Because they're Ooh, nice. not as resistant and they're not blocking what's going on, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, again, if you have any questions, if you want to know about Theta Healing or yeah. there was something else that I said, or you want to know like what it looks like to work with me, you know, whatever. I mean, again, schedule it. Yeah. Have a conversation with me. It's Ooh. free to have a conversation with me. It's free to get the MP3. Yeah, I'm actually getting it right now. <laughs> so, Abby, thank you so much. Was yeah. there anything else that you wanted to ask yeah, me? Yeah, I had one last oh, question to ask you. Um, I mean, your, your website is called shatayourincome.com. So, like, what's, what can we do right now? What's the biggest thing we can do right now to shut our income ceiling? One, say yes. Having said yes during this, right yeah. and to listen to that mp3 for 30 days <laughs> you know i mean that's those are the biggest things you have to look at yourself do you want it to be long and arduous and hard go ahead do you want it to be easy and quick i'm giving you you know have a theta healing session you know listen to this mp3 you know whatever fits for you Okay. Take the class, you know, but this will actually be like the quickest, easiest road, right? Okay. So much else going on. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Anything else, Abby? Uh, the thing that is, I, I, I've seen two, I've seen two audio. One is listen to the draw income to you instruction MP3 first. Oh, then listen to the one minute draw income to you. Oh, so instruction first, then the MP3. All right. All right. Right. When I do that. Can you hear me? Right. So you only have to listen to the instructions once and it okay. takes like three minutes, right? Okay. So I'm just going to let you know, this is all about it not taking a long time okay. so that it can fit into our lives, right? So okay. you don't have to like, but you know what I mean? Like you can do this, like just take a minute and do it. Okay. That's it. Okay. 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 Let's try that. Yes. Yeah, Abby's looking into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the instruction is two minutes, 24 seconds. And please, like, when you get it and you start utilizing it, uh -huh. let me know how it goes for you. Okay. I'm letting everybody know that. Yes, I will. I will.